Hey everyone, welcome to Gurukul. In this video series, we will be covering all the topics which are important for second mate's written exam. And in this video, we will cover only for celestial navigation. For other subjects, we will make other video series respectively for those subjects. So before going into the topics, let's have a look how the question paper looks like. The celestial navigation has two sections. Section one is for principles of navigation and section two is of practical of navigation in section one in question paper they asked definitions and theoretical questions additionally they also asked numerical problems in section two it is full of numerical problems like long by cron x meridian let by meridian altitude polaris intercept method and all i will try to keep this video short so to keep the video short i will cover only those topics which are important for the written exams so in this video we will learn how to calculate true altitude from sextant altitude and we will learn for all the celestial objects like sun star planets and moon now this true altitude is used in many calculations this is also used in long by cron this is also used in let by meridian altitude so i request you to watch the videos fully and watch in a sequential way because the videos will be designed in such a way so if you are watching sequentially then it will be easy to understand all the topics so when we measure sextant altitude the sextant altitude is not the true altitude because it has certain errors so to get the true altitude we need to eliminate those errors so we will we apply corrections so how to get the true altitude now first we will see how to calculate true altitude for the sun from sextant altitude so in question paper you will be provided with the sextant altitude you will be provided with the index error and the height of i all right now you just put the sextant altitude whatever the, is the index error given in the question you put that one if it's on the arc subtract the error from the sextant altitude if it's off the arc then you have to add the error after applying index error you will get observed altitude so after that you have to apply dip dip is based on height of i and the height of i will be given so you don't have to worry about the height of i so to calculate dip we need nautical almanac go to the nautical almanac first and the second page here is the height of i this is the dip height of i and these are the corrections so this one is given in the meters but if the height of i is given in feet then you have to use this one so if the height of i is 2.7 so this correction is 2.6 so this one is 2.6 2.8 meter so 2.7 will be in between this here in between these two 2.7 so the correction will be 2.9 and this is negative if you will see the dip has negative sign this correction has negative sign so dip will be always subtracted so we have to subtract here the dip from the observed altitude and after that you will get apparent altitude now based upon apparent altitude we have to find the total correction so to find total correction we have to again go to the nautical almanac first page so here in the first page you can see these are the corrections if the altitude is 10 to 90 degree and if the altitude is 0 to 10 degree we have to use this page and here you can see sun october to march and april to september we have to check the months from the gmt time for which we are finding the total correction now here the apparent altitudes are given these are the apparent altitude in this table and these are the corrections for the lower limb and the upper limb so if it's the lower limb you can see the sign is positive here these signs are positive and in the upper limb the sign is negative so if it's the lower limb then you have to add if the upper limb then you have to subtract the total correction the total correction will be based upon the apparent altitude here this is the apparent altitude and the corrections are given respectively for those altitudes so whether it's lower limb or upper limb that will be mentioned in the question paper itself and to understand this suppose this is sun and this is the horizon so this will be the lower limb 
and this will be the upper limb. If we are measuring the sextant altitude from the lower limb, then this will be the sextant altitude. Then we have to add the total correction if it is measured from the lower limb. If it is measured from the upper limb, then we have to subtract the total correction. So we will get the sextant altitude which will be from the center of the sun. I hope you understand this. As the sun is close to us, so sun seems to be bigger than the stars and planets. And moon is also close to us. So that's why moon is also seems to be bigger than the stars and planets. So this upper limb and lower limb, you will see for the moon as well. But for the stars and planets, you can't see the upper limb and lower limb because it, it seems to be very tiny. So you can't see the upper limb and lower limb for the stars and planets. You can see only for sun and moon because these are closer to us and they seem to be bigger than the stars and planets. So once you have applied total correction, you will get the true altitude. Here you will find the true altitude. For stars, in question paper, you will be provided with the sextant altitude, index error and height of eye. Similar in all celestial objects, you will be given for the same thing. For stars, you have been given sextant altitude. Then you apply the index error, same as here. If it's on the arc, you subtract. If it's off the arc, you add. Then you will get the observed altitude. Now, after getting observed altitude based upon height of I from the nautical almanac first page, you will get the dip here. This is the dip given here. Height will be given in the meters. So this is the meters. If it's in the feet, then here is the feet. After applying dip, then you will get apparent altitude. Based upon apparent altitude, we have to find total correction. Now, from where we will get a total correction? Again, in the nautical almanac first page, here is the sun, total correction. These are the total correction for stars and planets. Now, for stars and planets, this is the table. This table. In this table, you will get the total correction. Now, look for the apparent altitude. So whatever apparent altitude you got, you see these are the apparent altitude and these are the corrections. So as per the apparent altitude, you will apply the total correction. These total corrections are only subtracted. So you don't have to worry about the sign because uh, in nautical almanac, the signs are given whether you have to add or subtract. So you don't have to worry. So you have to apply total correction then you will get the true altitude for the star. Now let's see for the planet. So for planet, again, you have the sextant altitude, index error is provided, you have been provided with the height of i, so you have to apply index error to the sextant altitude, you get observed altitude, then you apply dip, dip again is from the nautical almanac, first page, depend upon the height of i, you get the apparent altitude, based upon apparent altitude, now you have to apply total correction. Now for the total correction of planets, again, this, these corrections are for stars and planets based upon the apparent altitude. The correction is same for stars and planets. So the table is same. So you have to apply the total corrections based upon the apparent altitude. These are the apparent altitude and these are the corrections. But in planets, there is also additional correction for Venus and Mars. If you are calculating true altitude for Jupiter, then the additional correction will be zero. But if you are calculating for Venus and Mars, if it's given in the question paper that you have to find long background for the Mars and you have to find the position line. So you have to find the additional correction. These are the additional corrections for the planets. So this one is for the Venus and this one is for Mars. Apply the additional correction, you will get the true altitude. Now for Moon, Again, the process is the same. Now from sextant altitude until apparent altitude, the process is same for all celestial objects from here to apparent altitude. The process is same. So by now you have already understood from sextant altitude until apparent altitude, how to do calculation. So it is common for all the celestial objects because index error is for the sextant. It is the instrumental error and dip is based upon the height of i. So the calculation from sextant altitude till 
apparent altitude it is same whatever is the celestial objects you don't have to worry now once you get the apparent altitude then only the corrections changes because total correction is based upon the celestial objects so these total corrections are different for different objects once you have got apparent altitude we have to find main correction so this main correction is given in the last page of the nautical almanac based upon the apparent altitude so this is the last page here altitude correction table for moon if your apparent altitude is 35 degree to 90 degree you have to look for the corrections on this page if your apparent altitude is 0 to 35 degree you have to look for the corrections on this page here you can see the dip is also given dip will be same because it is dependent upon the height of i so these are the corrections given for the apparent altitude of the moon so 0 to 4 5 to 9 degree 10 to 14 degree 15 to 19 degree suppose if apparent altitude is 37 degree 50 minute so you will get height in this page 37 degree 50 minutes so this is 35 to 39 degree this is for 35 degree this is 36 this is 37 degree and this is 50 minutes so the correction is 55 minutes you apply the main correction to the apparent altitude now we have to find hp that is horizontal parallax so to find horizontal parallax you need gmt the gmt will be provided in the question paper if it's not then you will be given crown time by applying crown error you will get gmt that we will see later how to calculate gmt now suppose you got gmt gmt is 23rd august so this is the table for 23rd august and suppose time is 06 hour so this table is for the moon this is 06 hours we will see how much is the hp so here you got 58.7 so now you have to go to the last page of the nautical almanac again these are the hp corrections as i said earlier you can calculate sextant altitude from the lower limb or upper limb only for sun and moon because these seems to be bigger than the stars other stars because they are far from us so this is lower limb and this is upper limb these are the corrections given respectively for the moon this is the horizontal parallax now the hp we got 58.7 here 58.2 58.5 this is 58.8 so the corrections will be in between this here and our altitude apparent altitude was 37 degree 50 minutes so in this column we got these two values so we have to interpolate these values for that correction if the apparent altitude was something else suppose it was 50 degree then we have to use this column if the apparent altitude was 67 degree then we have to use this column and here we will get the hp correction so now you got the hp correction if the sextant altitude was for the upper limb then you have to subtract 30 minutes don't subtract if it's lower limb then you will get the true altitude so i hope you find this video helpful like the video subscribe share to your friends and do comment if you have any suggestion or if you have any doubt we will clear in the next videos thank you